Now then, people, welcome back to the Just Joe Football Show, and it is time for some more Euros 2020 content. As promised, today we are going to take a look at Group B. We did Group A yesterday. Thanks to everyone that watched that video. Continue to support the channel and helping the growth. So thank you very much for doing that. This is Group B, obviously. We'll do the rest leading up to a live stream with a few familiar faces on Thursday in the lead up to the Euros. Then, of course, we'll do a watch along for the opening game, which is Italy versus Turkey. So before we do get into the video, please like the video, subscribe to the channel, comment and get your notification bell on. And if you could just share it, man, share it around so more people get their eyes on it. That'd be greatly appreciated and enjoy the video. You heard it right. It's going to be just Joe and it's going to be all about football. He showed the same. Bam Fruity Yes! Yes! Yeah. Yeah. I've seen many more appearances from Pablo. Fantastic, inaugural guest. I have to pull out the big guns. So guys, we're going to start first of all with, of course, the FIFA World number one ranking side in the world. It is, of course, Belgium and surely favourites for Group B and, of course, one of the picks for the tournament. I told you my outside pick yesterday was Italy. I'm just not sure if Belgium will quite get over the line. You know, they've had two quarterfinal exits now at major tournaments, obviously losing Previously in the last Euros to Wales, they've got a bronze medal in the last World Cup. It seems like, it for me, it's now or never, you know. They've got an amazing side. They've done really, really well under Roberto Martinez. You know, they've come quite a formidable team. You know, he, he favours a 3-4-3. I think the real sticking point, though, is that back three. You know, they're at the arse end of the career. You know, you've got Vertonghen, Vermaelen, and of course, Toby Alderweireld. I think Denya plays there instead of Vermaelen, but that seems to be the weak point, obviously, of that side. Right wing back, Mounier, left wing back, Fogg and Hazard. Obviously, they've got Pratt, they've got Tielemans, you know, you've got Hazard, Mertens, Lukaku, who, by the way, get your money because he will score goals. Um, you know, they've 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 got a fantastic side, you know, it goes without saying. It's just whether or not they can they can turn that into, you know, actual wins, of course, as well. Kevin De Bruyne, let's not forget they have, and he's the star man, right? He's the main man, Kevin De Bruyne, Lukaku, obviously they've got a fantastic side. But again, that real sticking point for me will be that back three, you know, whether or not they can deal with the pace that some of the sides might offer, you know. We've seen this season at Tottenham out of RL not really great, you know. Jan Vertonghen's not really great, obviously, where where he plays his club football now. They, they're, they're a very much an ageing side. And I think for me, when it comes to Belgium, um, it, it's now or never because we've seen in some of the in some of the players that have been used in the friendlies, the, the younger generation aren't really up to it. And when we reel off them names, why wouldn't you want to pick Belgium as winners, you know? Because you have Hazard, admittedly, He's got to Real Madrid. He hasn't done great, but let's just run through again some of them players. You know, Tielemans, you've got Hazard, you know, De Bruyne, Lukaku. They're all doing bits, you know. They're all top, top players. And and in a manager in Martinez, yes, failed Everton manager, but he has got this team ticking. And they're number one for a reason. I think they're going to blast through, through the group. It goes without saying. Obviously, Denmark, Russia and Finland. Finland, make, you know... It's three wins out of three, but obviously when you get to the knockout phases, that's when it comes. And having had, you know, two quarterfinal exits and a bronze medal in the last World Cup coming third, you know, they need to get over the line, don't they? They need to get over the line. Let me know how, you, how far you think Belgium are going to go in this tournament. It's going to be tough. It is going to be tough for them. Um, you know, there's some really good sides as we'll go through, you know. Um, I believe Italy, Holland, England, France, Germany, Spain... You know, Belgium, of course, there's, there's a number of Turkey. Turkey are a decent side. You know, I've seen some people yesterday on Group A say Turkey won't get through. I disagree. I think, you know, Wales could end up foot of it, genuinely. But we'll have to wait and see. But that's Belgium, guys. The next side we're going to look at, guys, is, of course, Denmark. Denmark, look, they're the good side. Can they repeat their 1992 success of winning the Euros? They really are an outside bet. I, look, I can't see that happening. But they are a good side and they have some top pros, you know. Just reel some of the clubs off that some of these Danish players play for. You know, you've got Barcelona, Inter Milan, Chelsea, Leipzig, Tottenham, Milan, Dortmund, Leicester. This A lot of these players within this side play at some top, 
top teams, you know. And of course, they have their stalwart in, in playmaker Christian Eriksen. If anything's going to have to happen for them in the Euros, he's going to have to be on it. Can he be, you know, this seat? They're, they're Brian Laudrup that was in 1992. Look, I do expect, to be fair, Denmark to finish second in this group. I do think they will finish runners up to Belgium. That's just my personal opinion. You know, they've got a great spine within the side. Obviously, Anders Christiansen, you've got Kasper Schmeichel in goal, Simon Kajak. You've then got um, Hoiberg and Delaney that both play at top clubs. Well, I suppose a top club, but you get what I'm saying. Hoiberg's had a good season um, at, at, at Spurs. And I think for, for me, the real issue is lying attack. Of course, they've got Paulson. Dolberg and Martin Braithwaite. We know Braithwaite from his time at Middlesbrough um, and now playing at Barcelona. I mean, scratch your head kind of stuff. I don't know that how that's happening. So they're going... I think the thing is with Denmark, they're going to be difficult to break down and they do have that little bit of added quality in midfield from Eriksen. Obviously, good base with Delaney and Hoiberg. As I said, the spine is really good. Centre-backs, Kajara and Christiansen. It's, it's scoring goals that might become an issue. They do play with a 4-3-3 system. As I say, Dolberg Berg, Braithwaite and Paulson, although they are decent, they're not prolific goal scorers. So that's where the issues might come for Denmark. But I do think they will be difficult to break down, you know, especially with Delaney, Hoiberg and then Anders Christiansen's had a great season at Chelsea as well under the tutelage of uh, Thomas Tuchel. So I, I expect Denmark to actually finish runners up in this group and they will be a tough test for anyone in the knockout stages, especially with them being difficult to beat. Of course, Kasper Schmeichel's a great goalkeeper. So, I like this Denmark side. Are they going to win the thing like they did in 1992? No. You know, will they struggle in the knockout stages? Yes. But but I fancy them to come through in second. Remember, guys, I want you to let me know what, how you see the group finishing come the end of the, the fixtures. And next up, guys, is, of course, Russia. Look, famously, Russia don't do very well in this tournament. They're used to underachieving. Um, apart, apart from reaching the semi-finals in 2008, they failed to make it out of the group in 96 or 4, 2012. And having a read and doing my little bit of re research, the expectations in Russia are not really good at all, guys. As I say, no real standouts. I suppose the key player you would say is probably Mario Fernandez, the right wing back who plays for CSK in Moscow. Look, I, I like I said, you know, I'm back in Denmark, but I think. With this group, obviously, Belgium are going to hammer it. Finland, first time in, they're going to struggle to get a win. It is going to be so important, the tie between Denmark and Russia for me. They're, it could be a boring game to watch because, you know, the Russian coach, uh, Chir I'm going to hammer his name here. I'm so poor with pronunciation. Cherchesov um, likes to play with, you know, Normally, five at the back, four, two, three, one, very defensive, four, three, one, one, you know, and I, and I think it'll be a bit of a stalemate, but I fancy Denmark to do it. And as I say, it will be between them and Denmark who, who gets through. Um, look, Russia, we've seen in previous tournaments against Spain, for example, they part the bus, they get a one all, they take it to penalties, they win in penalties, you know, um, I can feed with that great save that he made with his foot. Um, so they are going to be difficult to beat, but I just I, look the record within the European tournament isn't that great in comparison to the World Cup. I just think Denmark will have too much for them, and Belgium will blitz everyone within this one. So Russia are going to struggle for me. And lastly, guys, we're going to take a look at Finland. I can't tell you nothing really about from Finland apart from it's their first major tournament doing some research guys november 15th 2019 will always be etched in finnish history as they beat Liechtenstein, which meant they qualified for their first ever major tournament obviously it's a it's a very cold place it's very ice they're very good at winter sports so naturally football isn't huge over there um they went through a full calendar year once without actually winning a single game coach came in uh canerva Again, apologies for pronunciation, changed it up. And obviously there is the emergence of Timu Puki, who I've been told I look like a few times. He's a goal scorer. They've managed to get through. But look, Finland for me, they're going to struggle big time. Um, you know, Belgium will walk through them. Denmark and Russia, the same for me. But I, I guess the main thing for them, like, it's... 
Just being at a tournament is enough, and that's not to discredit any Finnish people that watch it. I very I doubt they will, but it's a long way to triumph for them to actually get to a major tournament. You know, to be playing the likes of Belgium in tournament football, Russia, Denmark. You know, Denmark have won it. Let's not forget it. Nine nine two is it's more than what we can say. You know, um, as an Englishman, so you know. They're just buzzing to be there. It's their first time here. Team and Puka leading the line. Do I think they'll pull up any trees? No. Maybe he'll score, and that's a big thing in itself. But, yeah, I can't, I can't see Finland getting a single point, unfortunately, and I think they'll... They'll be the you know the dead rubber of the of the of Group B. But that was your rundown of Group B. Remember, we will have Group C tomorrow uh, and more to come. And then, as I say, the live stream culminating on Thursday with a couple of the guys. We're going to pick our go top goal scorer winners, etc., etc., etc. Thank you as always for tuning in. I hope you like the video. Like I say, if you do, please smash a like on the stream. Subscribe to the channel. Get your comments in. Get your notifications in. I hope this is giving you some sort of an idea of some of the team. I know I can't give you, you know, stats figures, but I'm just trying my best to, to, to convey my thoughts on each individual team. Thank you as always for watching. Smash a like on the video and I will see you tomorrow. Nice, bright and early for the daily leads. Leads it too.